no gonna come in like wow now in a Jamaica. Believe you me, man. Gun here, gun deer, gun almost everywhere. Gun and coke. Gun and coke. I read Jamaica now. I will know say I don't know little Fenke Fenke people. Especially the coke, the coke move. Man find billions of dollars out of coke rasta in our house. Billions of dollars. Now the gun thing is a problem. The gun thing is, 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 is I think it's bigger than the coke because at least the people who have the coke here, so I ship them, I will ship it for somewhere else. False start, false start. Good day, good day, good day. This is the stepping razor. I tell you, science and technology. Sometimes the technology get off serious thing. But to the pan line again, I will give thanks. Yes, yes, yes. As we have said, sometimes technical difficulties reach you and you have to really figure it out. You understand? So we're glad we figure it out. This is the stepping razor, the art of war. We're there with you. And next Thursday, hot, 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 hot. Yes, yeah, so on a boil outside. I believe you, me, it's a boil. And we're inside. I said, cool. Yes. Give thanks to science and technology with air condition. <laughs> okay, so we have the journey till 5 45. And as you know, we're going to just go through the pieces and thing. And as we are say, we give thanks so we could have solved that mystery. Because it's really a mystery. You know what I mean? Okay, so I kind of lose track. Bear with me a little bit. Let me catch up back my breath. Let <laughs> me catch up back my breath. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. We just want to say a little thing here before the next ad them. You know, we want to heal up a brother named Frank who passed away. You know, Frank was a member of the, the group named Wadada. Yes, he passed away. And then I go have a, what you call a nine night. Rona, mm, where, where them call it? Road, uh, Graf, Grafton Road, near Grafton Road, is so. This Saturday, this Saturday, my brother, nine nights. So, all the ones who know that bridge in there, you know, I'm used to a house at Dread and Country Farm House, you understand? Well, as we are saying, the bridge in Passway. I was sure them to, you know, I think one of the, one, the other one, they are Canada, and they have Dipstick. I don't know where I'm going to change the name there. <laughs> Dipstick, I have to change the name of the bridge in. What <laughs> kind of name that? Deep stick. Anyway, deep stick. The bridge in the Ark, Canada. I don't remember his name. I'm Frank. Well, Frank is the one we passed away. Eh? And we are say, you know, yes, things happen and we have to just deal with it. And as we are say, there will be a nine night this Saturday around a Grafton Road. Eh? All right, so we'll go to the break. Yes, today I find cutting it, stepping away, that's how I see it. Still disoriented, anyway. All right, so two little things where, well, it's more than two little things, but we just mention them two, you have to know. We see the scientists, them, I say, them making a pill that can reverse aging. Yes, they're making a pill now that it can make you, prevent you from look old. The aging process can go down or maybe stop, as can't do them, I say. So we have to see how long that I will take to really dip on the market. Yeah, because you know some people, the old age thing and them no work out, you understand? And then now we see the Prime Minister of Canada Trudeau, Trudeau, um, him tell the Canadian to brace another virus, a new virus. I don't know if all these things work out that way. Like, a man, I will, a man, I will tell you, the, the, the citizens say, uh, watch out, a new virus are coming or watch it. That means, say, uh, them have a virus, so I, I think they have one named Disease X, where it's not only him that are talking about it still. At, at least him not call it um, disease X, but there's an article that them say the next virus is disease X. Now him, the Prime Minister of Canada, say, brace 
It's a new virus. He might tell the Canadian them that. He might tell the whole world. He might tell the Canadian them. So he knows something. He knows something. It's like our Minister of National Security there did I tell you, say, according to him, intelligence, he knows a 200 gonna come to the island every month. Well, we never see no, <clears throat> we, no we never see no reason for believe him because all six months, they not get 200 gun. No gonna come in like wow now in a Jamaica. Believe you me, man. Gun here, gun deer, gun almost everywhere. Gun and coke. Gun and coke. I read Jamaica now. I will know, say, I don't know, little Fenke Fenke people. Especially the coke, the coke move. Man find billions of dollars out of coke right, sir, in our house. Billions of dollars. Now the gun thing is a problem. The gun thing is, 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 is I think it's bigger than the coke because at least the people who have the coke here, so I ship them, I go ship it go somewhere else. Even though them go to ease off some and just flood the market long here, so. But the gun, we see the way the gun are though to the Jamaican society and the man them who have it. So when they matter about virus, we now have our virus. Our virus is some little youth on the road. We find themselves with these guns and it's creating havoc in the system, in the society. We don't know what why happen. And as we hear this Prime Minister say, well, the Prime Minister of Canada say, he might tell the Canadian and them for brace with the virus. Hey, if a virus is in Canada, it will reach us out. Simple. If a virus is in Canada, it will be America. And our link with Canada and America is like, you can't, it's, it's like a, a, a soldering, like a solder wire upon wire. Solder it and then clamp it down. So we don't know that too. That's why we are saying, these people don't, I don't know if they don't understand, or if they just live for the moment. These government people who deal with the same thing. You cannot have an economy that the basis of the economy in relationship to how it develops money-wise. It's tourism. You cannot do that. And you can't see what it happened during the COVID time. During the COVID time, tourism get locked down. People lose their job and all these things. Because we keep depending on service to really build up our economy. And our people is more than just servicing people. Them service things that come from slavery days. It's just that now they make it more refined. Give a little money and you feel so glad that you can't go home with a little money if you go do this and do that, do that. But it's still in the realms of are we progressing? Because most of the money, most of the tourist money don't stay at Jamaica. Most of okay, people book them hotel book them plane ticket and everything from foreign using credit card and maybe drugstore. So when we are talking about economy, this and economy, that we, we, we feel good for no say, yeah, the economy are boost up. But what is the long-term plan? What is the long-term plan? When we hear civil war in a certain country and there's a possibility that we could have civil war in jamaica too when we hear about flood hurricane we look we're going to st elizabeth this or now pan 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 down, down in a treasure beach and all them places where tourists love tourists because they've not reached on a they've not reached on a treasure beach yet to spoil it up and you can't still walk on the beach in a treasure beach, you have a pathway to go to the beach where nobody now will stop you from walk for go beach. I don't know if no other place in Jamaica right now where you can do that freely. 
but we cannot keep depending on tourism because any little thing happen whether the act of nature or man start to go on bad in our country the tourist industry get cramp the tourist we have things that is indigenous to jamaica that we can't live off of. We can't live off a of certain things yet, so by exporting look at Trinidad. When you go in a supermarket, most of the things they like, when you look at the water, take for instance water. How the hell we import so much water from Trinidad? Eh? Coconut oil. Coconut oil. How the hell we import so much coconut oil from Trinidad? What is it? Rice I come from Guyana. When we can plant rice, that's all. Anyway, we will take a, a, a news break and come forward. This is the Stepping Razor. Good afternoon. I am Patrice Walters with the local and international headlines. The Hanover police seized two kilograms of cocaine during an operation on Wharf Road in Orange Bay on Tuesday. Reports are that about midday, lawmen were in the area when an abandoned building was searched. A plastic barrel at the premises was also searched and two transparent packages containing the cocaine were seen inside. The illicit drug, which has an estimated street value of $3 million, was seized. No one was arrested. Two alleged robbers who were captured by the police on Old Hope Road in St. Andrew last Friday have been charged. They are mechanics, 22-year-old Alex Bailey of Graspole Avenue and 19-year-old Oshin Wood of Lacoose Road, both in Kingston. They have been charged with robbery with aggravation. Reports are that on August 16, a man was riding a bicycle along Old Hope Road when Bailey and Wood, who were traveling on a motorcycle, pounced on him. Wood, who was the pillion rider reportedly used a knife to relieve the man of his properties. An alarm was raised and Bailey and Wood were intercepted by the police as they attempted to escape. They were charged on Monday. Their court date is being arranged. In news overseas, United States border agents intercepted a truck carrying more than $5 million worth of meth at the U.S.-Mexico border. The drug was hidden inside a shipment of watermelons. It was wrapped in plastic, painted in two shades of green to resemble the fruit, and placed among real watermelons. More than two tons of meth in a total of 1,220 packages were seized by officers. Stashing drugs among produce is a common way to smuggle illicit substances across the border. Banana shipments are the most popular, but officers have recently found narcotics in cheese and avocado. Yes, we are with you upon the stepping razor. A pure thunder and lightning outside. <laughs> pure thunder and lightning. May I tell you, I don't know where going in your area. But, but our well, last week, a week before, an earthquake shake. I mean, I tell you, say, people that talk about the one before that, more than all the matter about the one we just gone, but you see the one we just gone, it's terrible than the one before. Believe you me. So we we'll start out the program and talk about this service economy where they are developed at Jamaica. And I say, you see, like how we in some climate changing and the hurricane them are get vicious and the place are get hotter. And earthquake, not in diverse places again, flooding and all them something there. We cannot depend continuously on tourism to help the people them in Jamaica to live a better life. We know that a whole heap of people is now being helped because them get a work. We go service people in a hotel. But we have the COVID. <laughs> we have the COVID experience as a marker. For sure, say, if we continue, and we have to do it faster, if we continue to depend on tourism to advance Jamaica economically, it's going to be a serious problem. 
Because if a prime minister in Canada, I warn the people about the next new virus. And if we say hurricane that come like wow all over, St. Elizabeth, feel it. And that's just because it go up on the south. What I'm when I want when 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 one of the hurricanes them come straight over Jamaica, like how them go over Cuba. Why the people that don't have no far eye? Them need some far eye. Them need some far eye because it is going to be seriously dangerous when the tourists them ease up off of Jamaica. Because I hear them all that. I tell you, them have advised you, I got out, you know, them have about, I want to say, a couple dozen countries well, where them have advised the people them not to go to. Not only five now or four, but several countries, both in Asia and in, a, um, in a the Caribbean, South, South America, them advise the, them, them citizens not to go there. When it reaches a stage where, just like how we now get no plant here now, just like how the whole of the period them blow off of the tree them, where we all get food from to develop the Jamaican people, why is it that we are dependent on Trinidad? The amount of money where we use to import things from Trinidad, unbelievable. And Trinidad do half the size of Jamaica. <laughs> Trinidad. Serious thing. Trinidad a produce like wow. And you can't see it when you're going at the supermarket, them man. You can't see it. We are dependent on how much tourists are coming to Jamaica and I tell people say. We have the biggest tourist industry, this, and we're developing how much hotel on the North Coast. And now they're going to ravage the South Coast and ravage St. Thomas and make the people them feel say the highway was made because of them. People at St. Thomas, you know, know so we love you, you know. May I tell you, no, say, I mean, I make no trouble neither, you know. May I say, the highway was not meant to help you know, traverse easier to and fro. It's not only the highway make for. Them plan out the thing long before they make the highway. Them have other things that is going to happen there to facilitate the highway. And that is hotels and apartments. Right now, them have apartments down there for 500,000 US. And that them are built up. Them are built up places like St. Thomas where St. Thomas people can't afford those things. So here I go, we go again with service. We're going to be servants. St. Thomas people are going to turn servant now. And because our only power we are suffer so. When we get a little food in our mouth, I a little money in our pocket. We feel say the world. So we don't move from that. We stuck at that. And that is where them have the people them in them. Meanwhile, them same one. Them same one who has sell out the land to foreigner. We have Jamaican face on it. Yes, that is where them are do. Foreigner buy certain things and have build certain things. But you have a little bossy slave in front of the whole project. That people can say, see the Jamaica own this and Jamaica own that. How much are the hotel them, big hotel them on the North Coast, Jamaica own? How much? And where you going there? White people like white people. And who are served them? Black people like black people. And that is not. That is not a problem because it's a black country, you know. But when we look on the money part of it and how it really has facilitated economical development, economical development we are working with for the people, for the people, and the people in a tight grip. 
So when Mother Nature, when Mother Nature come round again, and when the virus people them start to unleash them virus again, and then these people stay at the yard, and you get lucky in your house again, then you're going to say what me I say. Then you're going to see what me I say. When we can import things like how oh, we used to import it like now, where is the things them that is going to help us to get over these viruses and these idea of tourism? Tourism is a big money earner, maybe the biggest money earner. I don't even know if to watch Lupan or the Ganja where we have. Lupan Ganja. Ganja was supposed to be the goal, Jamaican green goal. We will not hear nothing more about that again. And you hear Kamala, a, a, a Kamala, I was saying to the name. You know what she said? She's going to legalize Ganja. You never hear that. The woman said she go and legalize ganja, not decriminalize it, or legalize it. In certain states, in certain states don't legalize it already. Yet till America did a hold down pan our ganja for years. Right now you can't do no business with ganja to and fro through the bank them in America. You already know that. If you sell certain people some ganja in America, you can't send the money through the bank, you know. Because when you find out your ganja money, is a problem. Me hear the woman say she's going to legal. The part of her thing is that when she reach in, she's going to legalize ganja. So what to the gold mine where we have with ganja? Where is it? Then I do see a whole pack of Canadians that come down here and I do this and I do that. Where the Canadians and them they know? Because we did want to import ganja. <laughs> Well, I tell you, say, you can't say the earth will live, you know. How oh, Jamaica want to import ganja from Canada? And what is? And who said the thing that we are there? Who said the thing that we are there? And now we're facing medical marijuana, miracle with marijuana. Warm to the good old orange in ganja from Westmoreland. And that we are talking about. That supposed to can contribute to the development of the Jamaican people. Them go around the corner and I deal with tourism. It's not that you can't simultaneously deal with both things, but you can't drop one and still hold on for the other and say, shoot a one there, go on good now. You say, boy, that one there you want to work with, and you work with it. Like when me are outside, you know, I pay rain and thunder and lightning and flash out there. Why am I when you get away? We're going to take a break and come forward. Yes, we're there with you. So, we hope that we get this on the line here because I'm going to introduce him. So, you must tell me if he's there on the line, you know. He's there on the line? I am there on the line. Mm -hmm. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, you are all. A big thing this, a big thing, because I, I the first time I go to California, I do the first interview with this man I did interview with. And we go him house. And I was taken back with what I see in him house. Unbelievable. I don't want to call him a Mali fanatic, still, you know. I know I know same name all him son. <laughs> Half a <of> Bob Mali. <laughs> Roger Stephans, what you do, man? You know, Muda, that was about 40 years ago. Yes, yes. Yeah, man, 40 wow. years ago. Long time. Yeah, man. Long time. And you've been a supporter for all that time. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for the, the gift of your support and, and your friendship for all these decades we've been trying to get this museum together. I remember, I don't remember which, which one of them places, was Chicago or somewhere. We were standing out in our kind of park here and we were talking about how you're going to move that museum from one place to the next. 
and your ambition was to carry to Jamaica. And we see that now you get the right person, I hope, to bring it here. Tell me that journey with all of them things. Because I'm not talking about Bob Marley, but reggae, Jamaican music in general. What inspire you for really start out that way there? For just collect reggae, 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 posters, album jacket, 45, anything we have reggae in the party. What inspire you for that? <laughs> Well, you know, that was in Calgary, in Canada, that we were going to the museums together. Oh, I'll do it today. The Calgary Reggae Fest. All right, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, okay, this is, this is a broad question, my brother. Um, I have been a public speaker all my life, as well as a, a music fan of, of, of great passion since I was a little kid growing up in New York on Alan Freed, the guy who coined the term rock and roll. You know, the Rock and Roll um, Hall of Fame uh, out in Cleveland is there because that's where the first rock and roll dance that Alan Freed threw was held. So Freed was a hero of mine. I met him several times. Even told him once I wanted to be Alan Freed when I grew up. And one of the great moments of my life is when I interviewed Little Richard and he called me Alan Freed Roger. So I, I've always been um, a kind of amateur historian of the music. I've got every record I ever bought since the 78 of Shaboom in 1954. I was a New Jersey State Oratory Champion when I was a senior in high school in 1960. And whenever a subject interests me, I, I keep a file on it. And someday I may write about it, someday I may speak about it. And that's what happened for me in 1973. I mean, I love the doo-wop music and the harmonies of the 50s. And I love the political consciousness of rock in the 1960s. And then the major labels uh, bought up all the, the exciting little labels and turned the music into disco crap. And I was looking for something in 1973 that would reignite my musical imagination and passion. And uh, there was an article that I never tire of quoting by a uh, gonzo journalist from Australia named Michael Thomas in Rolling Stone in the summer of 1973. And he said, reggae music crawls into your bloodstream like some vampire amoeba from the psychic rapids of upper Niger consciousness. And man, I, I didn't have any idea what that was, but I wanted to find it immediately. And I went out in Berkeley where I was living and I bought a, a used copy of Catch a Fire, the one that opened like the Zippo lighter. Like the lighter, I, like the lighter, yeah. Yeah, man, and I'd never heard music like that in my life, Luda. It, it just from the first notes of Concrete Jungle forward. And uh, I wanted to find out everything about this guy, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh and Bunny. And, uh, there was a... A Jamaican uh, man named Ruel Mills who had a record store in San Francisco on Fillmore Street in 1973 called Trenchtown Records. And he had a great selection of loops, and that's how I really began to learn about the, the best of Jamaican music, uh, Calassi and the Mystic Revelation of Rastafari and Ross Michael and the Sons of Negus and the father of reggae music, Joe Higgs, who became a very close friend of mine. And, uh, you know, uh, going to Jamaica in 76 for the first time with my pockets full of money that I'd saved for a year to buy records, having my pocket picked in tough gong uh, as I arrived uh, in the middle of this state of emergency. Um, it, it was a, a real education, I'll tell you. Um, being able to be a guest MC at Sunsplash several times in the 1980s and doing their radio show in L.A., which became the most uh, popular non-commercial radio show in all of Los Angeles in the 1980s, according to the Nielsen. Yeah, I remember, I remember, I was around your real station, and what them name again? Them sing a tune, them soul. Hey, uh, KCRW, and, 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 and you were on when they were still in a little converted junior high school classroom. Yes, Luda, yes, They yes. just moved into a $38 million station. Oh, yeah? From that little tiny junior. Yeah, yeah. I school. think it's Manhattan Transfer, the group name, Manhattan Transfer. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, there with me during the interview. the show right before mine. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, me can ask you a question now. Because people are like, say, well, with a white brother, they just take over the music, so take over this and take over the that, so. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, say to that. Oh, yeah, answer them to that. I, I, I'm sorry, I had some trouble hearing that, that question. No, I, I'm saying I that. Again. You have a whole heap of people who will say that, well, I call a white brother, just come down and come just have everything in a reggae and Bob Marley and this and, you know, how oh, oh, we make that happen? I'm just saying, well, I know we make it happen, you know, it just, it just happen, you know, the way they, oh, oh, you said to them, what you said to them when they say that? Can you must hear that? I, I, being a white man in the music? Yeah, I, I saw, so involved with it to the point where people, there are people get jealous because where you have for <laughs> reggae is, is, is where a whole heap of people don't have a quarter where you have. So well, it does hey. fill seven rooms of our home, floor to ceiling, and my wife is so happy she's going to get her. her she will move. Back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can imagine. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just I wanted to preserve this. <laughs> During my entire life, when, whenever I find something that I, I really love, and that's exciting and, and uplifting and, and makes the world better. I want to tell everybody I love about it. And yeah. that's what happened right from the very start in 1973. I was calling everybody to come over and listen to this thing called reggae music. Wait till you hear this. And then in order to understand what I was listening to, I, I read voraciously. I subscribed to a lot of music magazines. I uh, went to every show I could possibly see, and the, the Bay Area in San Francisco at that time was a hotbed of reggae, like yeah, Boston yeah. And, and Brooklyn, and they were the early outposts with a lot of very smart people involved in the music, and we helped each other. It was a great communal effort, and that's what I loved about it, too. So, you know, whenever I came across anything about Rasta or Bob Marley or yeah. Jamaican history, um, I, I cut it out and put it in a file, and uh, uh, you know I. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell, I'll tell I'm the still people. Adding, yeah. but I'm still adding uh, some amazing things in recent weeks have come in. I was given a book that was given to uh, one of the nurses who cared for Bob at Dr. Issel's clinic in Germany at the end of his life. And it is a German translation of a Marley biography uh, autographed by Bob, one of the very last mm. things he said before he passed. So yeah. that's going to go into the museum. And that'll be gift. What's happening now, it, it, it's kind of bittersweet, Muda, because a lot of people like me are getting old. I'm 82. And, and they're passing away, and they're leaving me their archives with the idea that I want to build a museum in Jamaica to preserve all this and share it with the people to whom it really belongs. So lots of interesting things have been surfacing just in the past few months. And as word gets out that the deal is finally done with Joe Bogdanovich, uh, more and more things are being offered so that Jamaica finally gets its history back. All right, hold, hold on. Hold on. Before we come to the selling of the whole thing, all right, you add it in your house, and then we say a portion of it was moved into a, a boat, and you add that museum in the boat. How long you add it in the boat? In a California. Oh, that was the uh, Queen Mary exhibition. Yeah, yes. and that was 23 years ago. Uh, it was actually going to be on the ship itself, um, but then Carnival Cruises took over the big uh, exhibition space, and they gave me two buildings on the dock. Yeah. Uh, to fill floor to ceiling with uh, whatever we could jam into those rooms. But a lot of stuff I wanted to show didn't fit. And now we'll finally have a chance 23 years later to uh, build a place to fit everything. And I then remember. some, because we're also going to design a traveling exhibition uh, concurrent with uh, the permanent exhibition for Mobe. And I got some interesting news today. You know, we've been trying for six years to get the land in St. Catharines next 
to the um, venue where, where Joe does Sunfest every year. And I've been um, worried about that because of sea level. Catching all, you're talking about catching all, catching all, not saying catching, catching all. Oh, okay, yes, Catherine Hall, pardon me. Uh, so now um, we're discussing with the UDC um, a place of some height away from the sea level. And water. Uh, yeah. it, but it would be in Mobe. I think and how that, that is going, how that, how that negotiation going? Uh, well, and, uh, after six years, nothing's been signed. <laughs> so uh, it speaks for itself, I think, Muda. I remember I saying mean, 30 how, how years ago. Does Jamaica want this? We had 30 years ago, we were standing up, as you say, in, in um, Canada. And you were discussing about who you're going to give it to in Jamaica. And oh, you I, mean that Mr. Lee Chin's offer? In Jamaica, yes. He, he was he was hey, the government, Lee Chin, or whosoever, private investment, but he was contemplating it. And I said, yeah, but there was no receiving body in Jamaica for it. He couldn't find anybody to, to take it. So what um, the government said about it? What the government say? I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't privy to his conversations with the government. Oh, no. You, you, you never approached the ministry, like the Minister of Culture, the Minister of Culture, to deal with it? You never do that? Oh, no. They, they approached me about four or five years after I turned down Mr. Chin's offer and uh, offered me... <laughs> No, man, top, man, top, man, top, top. Offer, 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 they, well, they offered me a lot less money than Mr. Chin had offered me that I turned down. Okay. So, of course, I could consider that. Okay. That is really something else. Because what would I have expected that the government would be so interested? Because there, you, you're not, there's not like that in the world. I mean, I tell you that. Not, where you have this, oh, trust me, man. The more that, the things where you give me, musically, give me. That me I say, why, well, you know, he's a rasta. The man spent all of his life a collecting things for reggae. I have some posters. I come in there and see some posters at some show where me I do from years ago. When we just start out, me I say, oh, you get them things there. Oh, you, oh, you get them, Bridget. Oh, it's man to bring them come here. Oh, you get them. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm always looking and uh, trading and, and, you know, every spare cent and then some that uh, I ever made over the years went into the collection. And my kids went to public schools and, you know, we never lived a fancy life at all. But I, I, I thought the, the purpose of, of that collection overruled everything else because... The, the, the whalers have come here many, many times. Yes. And, uh, you know, they've told me that they've seen the major whalers collectors all over the world <laughs> several times. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They, tell me there's, they tell me there's nothing in the world like it, so I guess I have to believe that. No, but may I tell you that too? May I tell you that too? Yeah, yeah, man, I believe you. <laughs> when you have them, no, may I try to find out all them cassettes with Bob Marley? I rehearse and Bob Marley attack certain things where you know you're nowhere. Oh, you get them. Where you get them from? Can you never did it? Oh, you get well, them. Well, you know, there, there, was, uh, there is a huge underground of especially Bob Marley collectors. He is the most important musical artist of the 20th century. He's the one that's going to live longer than Dylan and the Beatles and everybody else because his music stood for something. Yes. His music taught, brought you to a higher consciousness, and and he's a you know a third world hero and and also a first world hero. But what what he did in those few short life years he had is legendary, and and he was a prophet, and he knew he was wasn't going to be here long. I've talked about this because. Uh, in, in my latest book, uh, Bob Marley, uh, it, it's called uh, So Much Things That You Can Thank Me, Mary. I know, I know Mary's prompting me on the name of my book. It's called So Much Things to Say, The Oral History of Bob Marley. And Rolling Stone headlined its review 
because there are over 500 Marley books now. And they headlined their review, this might be the best Bob Marley book ever. So that kind really, of hold on, hold on, hold on. You say they have about 500 Bob Marley, from books from Bob Marley out there. Oh, oh, yeah, way more than that. Wow. That's yeah, there's a fellow in Kentucky named uh, Joe Jurgensen who did a uh, bibliography uh, several years ago, and uh, he's going to revise it this coming year because so many hundreds more books have surfaced in so many different languages. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, in, in my, my Marley oral history book, you know, I, I tried to have Jamaicans tell Bob's story. So it's interviews I did with him and 75 virtually all Jamaican people, people who were with him when he was shot, the son of the head of the CIA, who's been yeah. accused of <laughs> giving Bob a poison mm. book, which is nonsense. And uh, people who knew him when he was three years old, up in Nine Mile, and his family, and his band, yeah, and yeah. you know, people who grew up with him in Trenchtown when he first came there. So it's Jamaicans telling Bob Marley's story. It's not Timothy White putting bedroom yeah, talk yeah, in their yeah. mouth. Timothy White was there. And, Timothy was white was the outlet for all of Bob Marley one time. Tell you why you about Bob Marley you go to Timothy White. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the least said the better. All right, we can ask you now. We could come to Jamaica, you know. So Joe is the recipient of this massive wealth of history. Oh, oh, you come to that. Oh, oh you come to that agreement. I know it's not uh, how it happens about his years, six, uh, six or six years or so before this yeah, could have come Yeah, six years ago, um, uh, our friend uh, Colin Leslie put me together again with, with Joe. But, you know, I've known Joe for 40 years. He lived in L.A. in the early 80s when I was on the reggae. Mm. And he used to listen to it every Sunday. And he invited me and Mary up to his home for dinner. And as he established his time in Jamaica and started down some records he would bring some of his artists over and they would be on my television show and so yeah. he kind of kept in, in loose touch over the years but when he found out six years ago that the deal hadn't been concluded with anybody he said well i'll i'll buy it so we, we started our negotiations then and uh, he he actually flew me down to suncrest in 19 in 20 um 2018 mm. We were going to make a public announcement that he was going to buy the archive and oh. he was going to sign the deal for the land uh, and that week. And they withdrew the permission for the sale of the land a couple of days after I arrived in Jamaica. So we were able to make a public statement at that point. And it's been a, a hassle dealing for six years with the EDC to keep changing the finish line. Every right. time Joe thinks he's got an agreement and then he gets a copy of the agreement, the deal isn't what they agreed. And so he was, wasn't able to sign a deal with them. But I, I understand he's in the final stages now of negotiating with, with them for some land. In the right. place. So we'll see. Is it that, well, maybe should I ask, is it that um, the land is, is empty and you're going to build on it or just buildings on it already where you're going to... You know, construct and reconstruct. Or oh, it work? Oh, I think we're going to have to build a, a building especially Total. for it, don't we? Yeah. yeah. No, it, it, it's going to be, you know, Joe has promised a world-class institution. And here's good news, Mother. I think you know my friend uh, Bob Santelli. Bob Santelli has been active in reggae since 1978. Like me, he's a New Jersey boy. He used to write about reggae yeah. in the 70s. And, he, he's the guy who built the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yeah, yeah. and helped uh, with the Experience Music Project up in Seattle, and he built the Grammy Museum. And he's so Joe getting him for work, buddy. He's Museum right now, and he's building a $156 million museum of Louisiana music history, and he's come aboard as our, our senior consultant. Okay, you know, okay. He knows all the state-of-the-art things in museums all over the world. And that's what he wants to help Joe produce for Jamaica, a place so unlike any other place on the face of the earth in Montego Bay to honor 
the great art and yes. culture of Asia. Yes. Well, yeah, Virgin, I tell you, it's, it's something else given where it's coming from until now. And I remember, <laughs> as I say, the amount of reasoning I have about this thing, uh, you know, and it really reached the stage now. I don't know how long it went to check for Bill, but we hope, say, it's not a long, drawn out time where you now get to enjoy it in Jamaica. It kind of be nice for you to enjoy it in Jamaica. Yeah, man. I yeah. hope so, too. Yeah. I pray to Jah that uh, I am granted a long life so we can see it all to fruition. And you and I can stand there and open the door like you opened the gates in the Marley movie. <laughs> <laughs> the gate one. The gate one. Yeah, the gate man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but I tell you, it's it really something else, man. Really something else. Uh, it's yeah. hard to believe that it's finally coming to fruition, isn't it? After all these decades, Luda, that we've been talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Every time I meet, I talk about it. Every time. Every time, yeah. Every time I meet. For decades. I, it. <laughs> eh? yeah. I got tired of hearing myself speak. Yeah, we have some. Yeah, we talk about some things where we wouldn't even want to talk on the radio at all. As it really oh, is. yes, that's true. Yeah, we yeah. never want to talk that part of the radio. You know what I mean? But we're glad, we're glad to say it reached Jamaica. That is really what we are saying. It's really appreciated that it's it going to be in Jamaica, that Jamaicans can see it and people from foreign. We just like how them flat the museum, the Bob Marley Museum on Oak Road, them going to flat that even more. Well, this is the there. whole field. This is Gregory and Dennis and Moody. Everybody, everybody, and, everybody. And Slim Smith and, yeah. you know. Al I too. <laughs> yeah, Al Bootai and, and, you know, one of, one of the reasons I wanted you on my radio show the minute I heard your first record was the fact that I read poetry for uh, over a decade in schools and nightclubs and colleges and uh, the spoken word always uh, was in the forefront for me. I did a one-man show called Poetry for People Who Hate Poetry. Uh, it was all living English language writers and the E. Cummings who was too good to ignore. But, uh, you know, when I first heard what you were doing with dub poetry, I was so astounded by it. And, you know, uh, you on your first tour of America, you, you were on the reggae beat with us, and that was such a thrill for me, Nita. So, yes. you know, there's 40 years of history between us, and I can't thank you enough for being my friend and supporter for all these years. Well, I could make you move and don't know, say, I know, say, you have everything by, from from me in a yard. I know I sit on Kawa Jamaica. I'll tell you what. Yeah, man. Say. So we are there. Let me ask you a question. All of them thousands of cassettes there. You're going to digitize it and put it in there that people can listen to it. I'm going just in there. How does that work? Well, I, I've got a very dear friend named John Dubois. We know him in the reggae world as Dubois uh, Garage, and he has been phenomenally helpful to me over the years. He's digitized. I don't know, probably more than a thousand of the cassettes, the most important cassettes in the collection, uh, to make sure that that sound is not lost to history. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, what we're thinking about is dividing the, the collection. It depends on several factors, but you know, there's been over 80 books written by authors who have come here to research their books. And that's a valuable uh, archive yeah, for yeah. researchers to have in the future. So I think the books, magazines, newspapers, tell the you. 140 cubic feet of clippings, um, all of that stuff, uh, including the uh, audio and video tapes, uh, should probably go to the university. Yeah. Uh, to the headquarters of the Caribbean, uh, you know, across the street from the campus there at Ewing. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that would be a place where an awful lot of uh, secret documents will end up. Uh, probably the 1,800 pages of 
uh, transcriptions of the aborted Honey Whaler autobiography. That belongs to history. I uh, guess you have that too. You have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He abandoned the project, Honey, not me. And uh, yeah, that place, I remember, you know, I remember. 64 hours of interviews. Yes, I remember, man. I remember. So that, that is a no, no, no. Not, not, not going on with that. There's no development. Uh, that'll yeah. never happen. Maybe 50 years from now, some yeah. graduate student will put it together. But, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we'll all be gone by then. I use a lot of that, uh, the most important uh, material in, in so much things to say in my oral history of Bob. Yeah. You know, the, the key pieces that, that history needed to know, they found their way into that book. But, you oh, know, I've got 1,800 pages of transcription. <laughs> Leroy Pearson and I locked in a hotel room in Kingston for three weeks with Funny Whaler. You can only imagine what that, that was like. Oh, yeah. some, you know, there were one session we had uh, 14 hours. Oh, yeah? It's 14 sweet. hours. He, he, he didn't stop talking. I don't think he ate anything either. Oh, <laughs> so it was obsessive. Yeah. Roger. So much things to say. <laughs> well, give thanks to you know, Roger. Give thanks. You know, and we really say yes. It's something we should have there for a long time. Because, you yeah. know, only for the artists them who in that museum was alive when you was negotiating for bringing come to Jamaica from the beginning. And now them gone and passed away and never live for come see say or hear say it went come to Jamaica. Yeah. You know, Sergio, so yeah. give thanks to Sergio at stage, you know, where you can say, yes, it's going to come to Jamaica. So, we can see how long it's going to take for actually open up. We give thanks to you know, Roger. Tell your wife, I for me. Yes. I will, and give my love to Jackie. And uh, yeah, again, man. thank you for your support over all these years. I can't wait to hail you up classically. Yeah, man. Give thanks. Give thanks. One love. Yeah, yeah. that was. Roger Stefan, the man, I must say, have the biggest collection of anything where you want to talk about reggae. Whether the artists, whether the music, whether the written interviews, anything where you want to hold your hand pan. It's like a research. Yeah, it's like a research library. It's like a research. I mean, trust me, man, that's going to be a serious, serious museum. We're going to take a signal break and come forward, yes. Yeah, the time is four minutes past the hour at four o'clock. And as we just said, we've been talking to Roger Stephans, the man who spent most of his life. Well, as you hear me talk to him, and I say, 40 years, me and him talk about certain things. And he did that week before me know him. So you must know, say, most of his life he spent, I collect all of these things. To the point where now, all those who couldn't get to go to California, like them days, eh, go and get to see it in a Jamaica. We should have talked to, I don't know if, if, if Shamara can get Joe up on the line eh, before the program done. We could hear what I say about the longness or the length of time where this might take. If you know, hear the man say UDC, kind of in some little. If I'm but no and they about the land and all them something there. I don't know if Shamara listen to me if you could have get Joe up on the line. But it's a big thing. It's a big, big thing. Yes, big thing. Yes. You know, I think it was about ten years ago. A young name Mario Dean was killed in a cell. And he was held with ganja and taken to the jail in a uh, Main Street there by some police. Him lose him life in uh, the police station. And it's all because the police them catch him with a split. A bridge you know did a work. Cause he have all them tools for him to when them catch him, when them hold him. Ten years after the Mario Dean case is still in limbo. How is that possible? 
How is that possible? Them know it's who murder kill him. Them know it's who caused the killing. And 10 years, 10 years. It a linger, 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 linger. That now they must say November. Something I'm gonna call up. That is where I talk about you no know, why people do certain things. You know, you talk about badness. I will if I them think the way you are going on a revenge killing, you know. A man of revenge against whosoever. I just vex because them see a certain things supposed to go on and it not go on. Them just take the line of them own hand. No, we not claim or tell people we're going to take the line of them own hand, you know. But this thing here with Mario Dean is a weird thing. It's strange. What is it that is causing a case like this? to draw for 10 years. What is it? The justice where the family of this virgin has searched for. 10 years? A Jamaica will live in you know, like something happening in New York and a California, it end up. No, Jamaica, Everybody know it's who killed the youth. And everybody know who caused the youth to get killed. And it just a linger, 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 so. It's a terrible thing. Me drive go down there. By the funeral. When I take when I have the funeral. And what would I believe, say, is a slam dunk case, it just you know, I mean, it happened, man. You see what happened, and that was just got through. But it take 10 years, and still going. 10 years, and still going. But that is the way of the system. That is the way of the system. That's why I said the system is a fraud. System is a fraud, that's that. Because not, not, not supposed to go that way there. Not, not supposed to go that way there. That the man dead and buried and gone, and what people all forget about him. If the idea that it never tried yet and done with, with people who didn't know if somebody never ball out, a ball out, the ball out, no, make it make you know, say, well, even me, I choose ball out. Why me know, say, this brethren, uh, the case never done. One of them people I do, man, one of them not wake up. Wake up, man, that just system people that try to get out of some crazy people who control the system. A justice people are search for. And no, no peace now over there until equal rights and justice there. No peace until there's equal rights and justice. Because we see all man allegedly rub up place and rub up this and rub up that. And until so long I'm yard, for how much years now, in life is the same way, same way. And you know, you're not more about them cases. Eh? And people are saying it go on still. But how long it cannot go on to? How long? It's a terrible, terrible thing them have we now. Terrible thing. So we still have said justice for Mario Dean, you know. We still have said justice for Mario Dean. Yes, because we never know say them things that still are going. Never know at all. How, how is that possible? How is that possible that this thing is just going on and on and on and on? So. All right, we're going on. Music news time, music news. Oh, yeah. Smith no come from Africa. Time again, when we give you some names from Africa. We're going to start with the female names. Abijay, 
Abijah. Abijah means we ask to have her. A B E J E Abijah. Abiki. 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 A B E K E Abiki means to be loved. To be loved. Abiba. Abiba. A B I B A Abiba means beloved one, beloved one. And Abio, Abio, A B E O Abio means born with wealth, born with wealth. So that Abije, A B E J E Abije, we ask to have her. Abike, Abike, A B E K E Abike, to be loved. Abiba, Abiba, A B I B A, Abiba means beloved one. And Abio, A B E O, Abio means born with wealth. Mill names Adla, Adla, A D L A, Adla. Adla means justice, justice. Afi, A F I, Afi. Afi means spiritual, spiritual. Ago. Ago, A G U, Ago. Ago means lion, lion. And Ajani, A J A N I, Ajani. Ajani means someone, someone possessed through struggle. Someone possessed through struggle. So that Adla, A D L A, Adla means justice. Afi, A-F-I means spiritual. Ago means lion, A-G-U, lion. And Ajani, A-J-A-N-I mean someone possessed true struggle. That is African names. Yes, today I with you. We are talking about Mario Dean a while ago. And it's really a travesty. Really a travesty when these things happen. And the justice system takes so long to bring about justice for the person, for the victim. And we just can't do nothing about it. We are at the mercy of these people. people. That's why certain things don't work. Yes. That's why certain things don't work. Okay. We give thanks, we want to give thanks to Shamara Preston. Yes. She there a long, long, long time, I tell you. Long time, I never see so much ones when I don't know how long I read there. Sunday, I see some new faces in the place. Why, well, yellow up, you know, a wonderful, organized Marcus Garvey tribute the other day. Yeah, man, well organized. I love it. I love it. 